Anna Chen here from Chen's Authentic Cuisine. Well, I have a gas. So a lovely friend of mine, Sarah Martin, and come to the rescue and uh, give me, very kindly give me two cans of the camping gas so I can be able to do a live show today. So thank you, Sarah Martin. So salt and pepper are the most basic ingredient in the kitchen but they do do wonders, especially to this dish today. So what I'm going to cook for you today is Kuangqi salt and pepper prawns. So the main ingredient I'm going to use is salt first and salt and pepper corn. And I have this um, um, about one pound for 454 grams, roughly that much prawns you can have a fresh prawns with shell or without shell i choose prawns without shell today and you can have fresh prawns or you can have frozen prawns if you do use a frozen prawn just make sure it defrost and divan and uh, and before and start cooking so what i did is with prawns i just put in table and half soft one cooking wine like that so I marinate in the wine is about uh, 10 minutes now so that's all nicely marinated so all I did was right, just put a paper top ready so I marinated in the sauce and cooking wine and uh, I have about two tablespoons of cornstarch in one plate and a cracked egg just give a nice beaten egg another bowl so like that so what i'm doing is just before you start cooking so just turn it down a bit just before you start cooking so i want to sear and i want to coat the prawns in the um uh, cornstarch and the egg then fry them in the hot oil so that way you don't get the gooey and the heavy coating outside of the prawn you get really crispy light crispy and crunchiness outside the prawn and you get really tenderness inside so that's what i'm trying to achieve so that's what i'm going to do so you want to pat dry the prawns because they've all been soaking in the uh, shells and wine you want to just put it on top of the kitchen tower so the reason being I want to pat dry them because uh, you don't want too much liquid then then when you sear them in a hot oil they're just going to create so much of a splash and it's just junking hot oil everywhere because the uh, hot oil liquid doesn't like each other right just do that on the kitchen tower so make sure they all evenly spread out. So and then so it's going to be make sure they are nicely spread out. On top of that, it's okay. That's okay. Right. So that's done. So next thing I'm going to do is just dump here and and dump in the egg wash. Oops, like that. So once you mix like that, and you're ready to sear them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a a, a few of them so ready for the sear them. So let's put the wok on. Let's put about three tablespoon uh, vegetable oil. So I don't want deep fry them. All I want is uh, uh, shallow and uh, sear them. So I just want the crispy outside. There's not even two, uh, three tablespoon. I just put a little bit more. Yeah. So this not more than three tablespoon. So, so that's that. So. Um, and just carry on doing that until the oil reach the smoky hot um, temperature again. So let's carry on like that. 
to the side and make a few of them so while you're cooking first batch and then you could uh, work on the rest so so this is a important uh, process and uh, you you really by doing so you really get the light crispy outside uh, finish you want to achieve so you don't get those gooey sick um, flowery mouthful of a, a bite of um, heavy flower taste in your mouth it's just very very light like so I'm watching my oil as well like that yeah I think the oil reached the temperature I left so now I'm just going to put the prawns slowly in the hot oil Going to, now I'm going to turn the heat down to medium to high because they are so quick to cook. Literally, take less than a minute. So just quickly do a demonstration here for you so what sort of shape they are ready to take out so uh, just to show you here right so that's the crispiness you want to see the cheese once it's cooked you want to try it once you reach this crispiness that golden crispy color then this time so what I do, I just switch off the heat for now because the result is that next part ready. So, right, so I need a bit of more cooking power. So I'm just going to put them on top there. Cheers. Soak off all the lovely oil. Actually, I'll do and here right next to the wall. Okay, so. I don't know if you can see that beautiful golden, lovely crispy color. So that golden color, and that wonderful golden color. It's not heavy at all outside. It's just a very fine thin layer of the crispiness. So, so that's the uh, then result we want cheap. So what we what we're going to do? We're just going to carry on. And to coat the remaining of the prongs. Do that way. So. so I want to do this in front of you guys so you know the pr how the process works. Because um, cause sometimes uh, just explaining may not quite get the message through. So. So that's why today I sort of doing this in front of you, so you know exactly what's happened, how to do it. No confusion here. Okay. Okay. Oh, I nearly jump off the plate. Oh, the sauce and peppercorn. I've just been over the uh, the 
note of salt and peppercorn I just ground it so as I said the key ingredient for this uh, dish is a salt and peppercorn so you want to have a tablespoon salt and peppercorn you want to roast them in a dry pan or wok uh, make sure it's dry it's about a minute also you know when they're ready is you almost see that uh, the peppercorn almost start giving out re reduce those oil outside the corn so you as soon as you see the shininess comes through the peppercorn then it's ready so you switch off from from the put in the motor or or any um, surface you could grind them to the ground to the powder so that's what i did oh it smells beautiful so to the powder like so so then to be rest to use later so other ingredient I have here is um, about some length, about some length of ginger. I finely shredded this time, so I shredded them very fine, and uh, because because I want them all in the length wise, and four or five glob garlic, and as I uh, finely sliced as well, and one or two spring onion, so. Spring only I did two different type of cut. So one cut I did is just finely chopped it, rolling cut. The other cut I just did a lengthwise like so. Uh, it's like about two inches lengthwise because I like them use the the len the lengthwise one to garnish um, towards the end to garnish the pones. So it just look prettier that way. So we're almost done here. And also, um, I got a one red chili, um, one green chili. So you don't have to if you don't have a red, or just use green, or you don't have a green, just use a red. So that's fine because I as is, I grow <laughs> green chili in the garden, so I uh, I like to use them because they're still growing. And you believe it? In the I also thought it's quite cold now. They they will stop um, b uh, you know fruiting. They still have some. I still got some. And green chili um, l beautifully grow in the garden and I might you know same as my tomatoes still red and still you know some of still just about tiny red it's beautiful in the, in the autumn so that's all the main ingredients and uh, so I'm nearly done with the coating oops I'm doing the wrong way around that one so corn starch first egg wash cornstarch it doesn't matter if you did one wrong way around <laughs> it doesn't make it too much difference it's a string that so yeah that's the last bit of the prong it's lovely so just get rid of that paper and I'm going to put that up here Right, so I'm going to switch back on the work. And the next thing I can see is reminding of the prongs. Just wait a couple of minutes. So it's quite lovely, fragrant oil from the seared prongs. Do you know the reason why um, with Chinese cooking, we always like to use Shaoxing wine to marinate in the meat or f seafood or what anything. The reason being because one, I explained it before, is that they really tenderize the, the meat or the seafood. Also, they get rid of the any sort of fishy smell or meat smell. So that's a wonder of the Shaoxing wine. Again, if you don't have Shaoxing um, rice wine, you can use dry sherry or glass white wine. And it uh, works okay, but it doesn't may not be reached that that perfect result you achieve but it's is the next best thing so so now i'm going to put the prong into the hot oil one by one in order so marching them in the right direction If you put them in uh, some sort of holder, you could put a lot in and it not overcrowd them either. So 
The other thing you don't want to do is to overcrowd them. Make sure they're all in a flat surface. They're all each one of them all flatly has both of the walls or pan. So then you can get the really quick searing results. And you don't kind of lose the uh, the process if we sear them, not steam them. So uh, if you overcrowd them, you probably end up with steam them rather than searing your meat or your seafood. Right, that's one. Beautiful. Right, up big. We're first that in so much food. Lovely, look at that. Beautiful. It literally takes less than a minute. Right. Flip over to the other side, so uh, okay, it's going to quite a very long cooking time whatsoever. Oh, the small is big one. I love prawns. I love seafood. So that's rich, that perfect, crispy and uh, golden colour. That's what I want. So once you've got that stage, what we want to take it out. In the plate, we put the powder on top. Just drain off the excess oil. So you see, you don't need deep fry them because I don't particularly like deep, deep fry my, my food um, if I can help it. So I don't think you really because this fresh produce like this foam so you've got so much flavor in it you don't want to over kill and kill all the lovely nice flavor. So just turn it down. Deep just Beauties, oh my goodness, oh my lovely. Now it's just so divine, it's now just lovely. So the oil you left on the pan or work, so uh, it's, it's uh, don't discard it. Carry on, use the same oil or what I do now is after I take them all off from my right so I turn the heat down because I'm dishing out those prongs but once it, uh, the prongs are out from the wok so what you do is heat back on high then you want first of all put your shredded ginger in And then your garlic, quick stir, soaking up all the lovely juice from the prunes. Right? More. So, as soon as you can see the aromatic flavor out, the garlic and ginger, and the ginger just starts in a crispy. Now, I want to put my chili. And the not the shredded um, 
part of the spinani, the top spinani part, I put it in now. Picture, lovely. Then you are adding back the point. Picture, oh, the smell from the chili is wonderful. And you salt and pepper corn. And a teaspoon of salt. So I wouldn't add in too much at the beginning. I'll leave some to say I want the taste, okay? I don't want the over salt it. Because I don't like my food over salty. Then that, that's it, that's it. So you have it. It's cooked. Tito. Now we're going to transfer to the food. All I do is just get, the, get rid of the oil from the bones, then I can dish up in here. Okay. Right. Oh. oh, the smell is divine. have a taste. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. <laughs> I was right. I didn't put all the salt in. I don't know the natural flavor of the fish from the foam. It doesn't really require that much. So I'm going to change my... Um, so half teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt is to taste really if you don't need too much salt in it you don't have to it's, it's just beautiful here you have it yeah corn tea saffron salt and pepper prunes oh i can't resist i have to have another one it's so lovely mmm so beautiful mmm Sorry. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me for work along with me today. And please check out my Facebook, my website, the YouTube channel, and uh, leave a like, subscribe. Thanks again. Have a lovely day. Bye.